Mr. Speaker, if I can just uh, say that uh, pay our respects to Nani, Nani Kohen Minhinik and uh, Iwi Katea Nicholson. Uh, today, who recently passed away in this last week, uh, and on the Morai up in Levin, uh, huge advocates for Kaupapa Māori, Tikanga Māori, and indeed Māori land. So I want to just pay respects uh, to them. Uh, at the last time we were debating this bill, Mr. Speaker, a number of members made a few comments. I'd like to go back to them, uh, just for the record, to make sure that we cover those off, um, and indeed address some of the issues that the member uh, Mika Faitiri has put uh, towards the, uh, uh, towards uh, the bill uh, tonight. Mr. Speaker, some, uh, Mr. Chair, some members question aspects of the bill that are actually features of the current Act and have long been part of Māori law, or land law at least. Uh, Peter Praune referred to Clause 170, which requires the Register General of Law of Land to show a governance body as the registered proprietor of the Māori, of Māori freehold land for which it was appointed. Uh, the member said uh, this was a departure from the current process and suggested uh, that this was the first step to bringing Māori land under the general, title, uh, general land title system. Um, Mr Chair, I can tell the member that Māori freehold land is and has been a part of the wider land transfer system of titles in this country since its inception, uh, since 1870, in fact. Uh, Mr. Mr Chair, if I can, I just want to, I don't want get to say too much to Mr Prane, but Section 10 of the current Land Transfer Act 1952 makes Māori freehold land subject to that Act, and Section 123 of the current Te Ture Whenua Māori Act 1993 requires every Māori land court order that affects or relates to the title in any Māori freehold land to be sent to the land register for registration under the general land title system. If the member has any concern about the registration process, then I think he's about 150 years is a little bit too late. Uh, to clarify this for the member, I note that the records of the Māori Land Court are a part of the court register and not a land register, and they record the decisions and proceedings of the court. We currently have only one land titles register in this country. Uh, there is no current statutory provision for the Māori Land Court records to be a land titles register. The bill will change this, Mr Browne. For the first time, there will be a formal Māori land register provided in statute and backed by statute sitting alongside the land transfer register of titles. I hope that helps the member. In fact, Māori land title will be protected by a dual system of registers, and, and I will say a little bit more about that when we get to part eight of the bill for the member's benefit. The member also questioned why a, mi a minor who is a sole owner of a parcel of Māori freehold land couldn't have that interest protected by having a governance body appointed. So as we discussed during uh, the debate, uh, I think it was part three, the bill provides a mechanism for the interests of minors to be protected, namely uh, through the appointment of Kaifukamaru Maru. And when it comes to governance bodies, I would like to point out uh, to the member that under the current Act, you need at least two owners to form a Māori incorporation. Under the previous Act, it required at least five owners, and before that, at least three owners. So once again, so this bill is simply building on existing approaches in law uh, where it's sensible enough to do so. The member Adrian Rudolph here, Mr Chair, referred to Clause 156, as did the member um, Mika Faitiri, and questioned why, when a governance body is appointed, the owners become the beneficial owners and not the legal owners. He uh, suggested there could be other options, such as appointing a custodian, uh, a trustee. Mr. Mr Chair, it doesn't matter whether you have a custodian trustee, which under the bill the owners can still choose to do if they think that's in the, in the best option for them, or whether you just have a governance body. In either case, the trustee or the governance body becomes the legal owner of the land. Uh, sir, as I explained when I took a previous call on this, this is no different to the current law where either the custodian trustee or the responsible trustees of an Ahu Whenua Trust or a Māori uh, corporation become the legal owners of the land. 
The owners themselves don't become the beneficial owners. They remain the beneficial owners, Mr Chair. Mr Chair. Um, I'm going to call the Minister, but I am going to reiterate a warning that I've given to the Minister previously about reading the speech. I know he's trying to, uh, he is replying to a lot of the comments, uh, but the, uh, the, the practice of Ministers reading speeches in committee is something which is certainly to be discouraged sure. uh, and has been discouraged by chairs and speakers in the past. Thank you, Mr Chair. I appreciate the, the help. I, I think because of the importance of this bill, I wanted to make sure this is on record and just for the purposes of replying to the points, but the points are well made. Sure, I appreciate sure. that. The, the third reading is a normal place to do that, but carry on. Sure, thank you. Uh, Mr Chair, what did I say? Yeah, blah, 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 blah. Um, I talked about having taken a previous call, uh, and we spoke to some of these issues. Um, so uh, I just wanted to reiterate again that the legal owner uh, simply holds the land on the behalf of, of uh, and, on, and for their benefit in accordance with the conditions that the owners set out in their... Um, a governance agreements, so it's pretty simple and straightforward, and I hope that helped Mr Nurafi. Uh, Lewis the Wall also questioned the issue about, and as did uh, Mika Faitiri, I think under clause 193. Uh, Kai Whakahare will be appointed by the Māori Land Court, and the processes involves a meeting of owners, so the court be can be informed of the owner's views before making an appointment. The first point to make is that this is also the current process under current law for appointing agents for the owners under Part 10 of the current Act. I won't go into what the current uh, Part 10 is, simply to make that point. But the process under the bill for appointing Kai Whakahaere is basically the same as the current process for appointing uh, agents. The, the Chief Executive has the responsibility uh, to report the views of, to the owners, and this is, uh, I'm told, not a power of, of uh, recommendation. Can I finally just go to Lewis the Wall? who raised the concern about the possibility of having more than one potential representative entity and how it, be, and it would be determined which one would have the priority. I'm advised that uh, there's no reason why, amongst the group of owners, there cannot be more than one entity uh, that represents a hapu and iwi associated with that particular piece of land. And I think that the real point here is to be made that uh, the owners don't have to appoint any representative entity as their governance body if they don't want to. That's the great thing about the bill. There's an element of choice available to them. It's not about telling them what to do. Uh, it's their choice in the end. Um, I wanted to go to, uh, finally, just uh, in the time left, to talk to Mika Faitiri's comment about uh, financial implications association associated with the governance uh, model. Uh, the exposure draft did indeed require existing trustees and corporations to transition to the new governance model. I think that it will be clear to the House that we attempted through the changes made uh, to take that away. Uh, as a consequence of the changes uh, that have been made now, existing trusts and corporations uh, will not have to face the costly transition unless they wish to, trans to, to by their own choice, move to adopt the new model. Uh, so that's, I think that's been well canvassed, so I don't intend to go over there. Um, Mika Faitiri also uh, wanted to take uh, in her, uh, actually in her SOP uh, 154 that she referred to just recently, suggested changing to clarify that this subpart include provisions about governance entities and how they are reviewed. Uh, so uh, clause 154 summarises the provisions relating to governance entities and that are set out in part 5. Uh, so I think it would be very misleading and to, to include the proposed changes in this provision. Under the bill, the role of the Māori Land Court is limited to reviewing the process by which a governance agreement is prepared, not to review the governance uh, agreement itself. That's important. Mika Whaiteri also suggested amending uh, Clause 184 to provide that a person may not be appointed as a kaitiaki uh, if they have been convicted of uh, dishonesty offences in the last 10 years. That's the substance of her, um, of her SOP. Uh, I do support the concerns that she's been talking about in terms of dishonesty of kaitiaki uh, but I think that the proposed changes would hold the governors of Māori entities to a much higher standard than those currently uh, managing other companies. So I'm advised that Clause 184 is modelled on Clause 382 of the Companies Act 1993, uh, which limits criminal history and exclusions to convictions in the last five years. So I think there's an element of needing to have consistency across the board and not just have it that Māori land is subject to a higher threshold. So, I think that the two provisions need to be consistent. But the one thing that Māori landowners did say in our consultation process uh, about this whole issue was that, uh, that I, our people I should be held to similar standards. I the time has come for me to leave the chair.
Already? Oh. I will report progress. More or less. More or less. Members, the House is resumed. Mr Chairman. Mr Speaker, the Committee has considered the Point England Development Enabling Bill and reports it with a member. The Committee has also considered the Energy Innovation and Electric Vehicles and Other Matters Amendment Bill and reports it without a member. The Committee has also considered the Land Transfer Bill and reports it with a member. The Committee has further con considered Te Tere, Te Tere Whenua Māori Bill and reports progress. Mr Speaker, I move that the report be adopted. So the question is that the report be adopted. Those of that opinion will say aye. Aye. Those against, no. The ayes have it. The Point England Development Enabling Bill, the Energy Innovation Electric Vehicles and Other Matters Amendment Bill, the Land Transfer Bill are set down for third reading next sitting day. The Te Turu Whenua Māori Bill is set down for further consideration in committee next, next sitting day. Members, the House stands adjourned until 2 p.m. tomorrow. Norera, tena koto, tena koto, tena tato katoa.